Hello, and welcome to Break and Water Restoration, How to Be a Mason. I'm gonna play a quick video real quick, and then after that, I'm gonna introduce a little bit about myself, and then you guys can introduce yourselves as well. Does your home have cracks in the brick siding? Advantage Masonry specializes in repairing mortar joint cracking and brick siding. Using a process called the Advantage System, we blend the color and texture of the repaired areas to match the original brickwork, including repairing any cracked or broken brick. It is virtually impossible to identify which areas have been repaired and which areas have not. Call Advantage Masonry today at 817-615-8885 or check us out at AdvantageMasonry.com. That was a company I worked for for about a year um, called Advantage Masonry. We went around the North Dallas area repairing cracked house breaks and mortar joints. Um, we worked on matching the mortar color and restoring values to homes. Uh, I'm going to ask for a bit about yourselves as well. I placed a spinning wheel in the middle of you guys. Uh, if you guys could take turns spinning the wheel and Tell me like your name, your favorite color, and your major. Right. Um, hi, my name is Trey. My favorite color is blue, and I'm a math major. Thank you. Welcome. All right, next up, you go to spin the wheel. Hi, my name's Angelina. I am a mechanical and energy. Right, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. All right, last person, go ahead and just introduce yourself. My name is Christian. I am a business major. All right, thank you. Welcome. Thank you guys all for joining me today. Now, I'm going to go over the different types of brick damage that can occur to your house. But first off, let me ask you guys a question. Um, how many people here have planning, plan on getting a, a brick house one day, now in the past, or in the present, or in the future? Yes? I do. Do you want to get a brick home? Okay, good. This information will help you in the future. Um, so, make sure to pay attention. Now, different kinds of brick damage. There are cracks and bulges, diagonal or stair step cracks, loose bricks and mission mortar, and spalling bricks. Spalling bricks occur when there's like freezing water damage. Usually water retains the side of the walls of the brick structure and then the water freezes and expands into the water and it pushes out and cracks the, uh, the surface of the brick, leaving this grimy, uh, flaky peel on the surface of a brick, which is not, it doesn't look very good for the home value. Now, there are different types of mortar. It's very important to know as a mason, there are M0, uh, O type, S type, M type, and N type. The general ratio is about three parts sand and one part mortar. Nowadays, you can get pre-mixed mortar that's about uh, the Portland cement and limes already mixed together. All you need to do is add sand and water. Uh, for mortar, we're going to use the S type. This is the primarily used mortar for brick structures. And the water you add will be depending on the elements. Let's say we're going to work with plain white mortar. We're going to grab a bag of S type plain white mortar and white sand and um, you're going to add as much water as you need. Sometimes the mortar dries up quicker, sometimes it just depends on the elements. So if it's really hot outside, that's the time that you're going to add more water. And if it's really uh, like rainy or you don't want to work during the rain, if it's really wet or like just like damp in the morning, you're going to want to add less water. It's just going to depend on the elements, how much water you need. It's recommended that you use a mechanical paddle mixer or you can mix by hand with a trowel or a scoop. Now tools of the trade, what you're gonna use to repair an actual brick structure and replace the mortar would be safety glasses, obviously some type of outdoor glove, a chisel and a hammer, grout bags, I have a grout bag for you right here. I'll explain the significance of this later. Trowels and brushes. Uh, anybody here do any gardening around here? Any gardening? Christian? Yeah. 
do gardening? Do you use a trowel before in gardening? Yes, a garden trowel. Okay, well, do you have a little bit of experience in it? That's good. All right, we also have brushes, striking tools, which are sponges, joiners. This right here is a striking tool. I'll tell you the significance of this in a bit also. And uh, rake tools, I'll get to that in a bit also. Power tools, just as an angle grinder, a power jack, and a mechanical drill mixer. Also, you're gonna probably need some of this stuff if you're good at power tools. Who here has ever used a power tools before? You have, Trey? What, uh, what, what power tools have you uh, have experience with? Like a drill and a saw. Drill and saw, all right, good. And you'd probably be better off in your case using the drill, an angle grinder. You can probably work a little bit better with that stuff right here. It'll make the job a lot smoother. Now, striking and types of mortar joints. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen many brick structures, but types of houses usually have some brick structures where the brick is popping out like a 3D kind of texture. You also have plain houses that are really flat. The joints are real flush, and it just looks like completely flat. They also have break joints where, as you can see right here, the joints are completely off the edge in the side of the brick and it's only in the middle that will give you that 3D texture. Concave joints, where the joint of a mortar is kind of like circular, it's like concave, essentially. And you would use, for a concave joint, you would use a joiner like this. These all tools help you for mortar and putting in that indentation that you'll need into a, a joint. That's what we actually call striking. It's when you use this to strike, essentially, the brick wall give it that texture and match the, the mortar. You have V-shaped grapevine. I don't see these very often on the job site. Uh, beat it, you can see the grout kind of comes out a little bit. I've never actually seen this in an actual house. Maybe different structures use these. Um, weathered joints, flush joints, which are the flat joints. You probably use a sponge or something for that. Stretch joints, and like I said, rake joints. The most common types I've seen are rake joints, concave joints, Joints. Moving on to actual reconstruction of a brick wall. Uh, I'm going to move over to the whiteboard over here and show you guys a bit of Now, we're going to move on to grouting, striking, and basics of brick concrete. So, there are many ways to get a brick structure and lay in the mortar mix. You can tuck point, which is essentially having the trowel, the trowel and the tuck pointing tool and pushing the mortar individually into the spaces of brick. Or you can use a grout bag, which I prefer to use, grouting. Now, let's assume here that we've already had our brick wall. We used an angle grinder or perhaps a chisel and a hammer and we knocked out mortar joints, right? We're going to need to fill in these joints with mortar. So with the mortar that you do have and let's say a bucket or a wheelbarrow perhaps, we're gonna to start to fill in these joints. The first step is grouting. So when you have your grout bag, you might wanna cut the tip up here to leave a little bit more room because they come off and they're really tiny. I don't know if you guys can see that right here. So we would snip that piece off. We would fold this grout bag outward so we can get mortar in here. And with a trowel for like a scoop, you'd have your bucket and you would scoop in the mortar to the grout bag until it's about halfway full. And at that point, you're ready to go. And you can squeeze out a little bit of that extra mortar, get those air bubbles out, and begin grouting the actual brick structure. So here's our brick structure right here. And let's say we're going to need to grout this area right here. What you're gonna do is just fold this up real nice and tight until it reaches the mortar. You can see right here and you're gonna squeeze down to get the mortar out of the grout bag. You don't wanna be directly in front of this. You'll just squeeze the mortar out while you're laying into the brick. You kinda of wanna be at a pointed 45 degree angle and then you can just squeeze out 
squeezing with this hand as well to pump out the mortar and squeezing out a thin, actually a really thick line. You're going to want to have a thick line here to the mortar joint, about three fourths, maybe one and a half inches deep into the mortar joint. And when you get done, that looks something like this right here. You'll see all this excess here, mortar on the break on the outer on the outer later layers. We'll deal with that in a second. The mortar is gonna need time to dry out. If you're gonna scrape this off right now and try to like strike it and like fix it up, it's gonna be too wet, it's gonna end up staining the brakes, this is gonna look all messy, and you don't want that to happen. We're gonna wait for this to dry out a little bit, all right? So maybe about a minute. At this point, you can be grouting these joints right here. We call these the head joints, the ones that are on the outside, the vertical joints right here. And this is the bed joint. So you can go ahead and start grouting your bed joints, grouting the head joints down here. Don't get too far ahead of yourself, especially if it's your first time, because the mortar will dry up on you really quick and it will be really hard to get out. So let's say we wait about a minute, we feel like this mortar is almost ready. We're gonna do what we call the thumbprint method of getting this, knowing when this is ready to be uh, struck and taken out. So we're gonna put a thumb here, we're gonna press down, and if it leaves a thumbprint on the mortar, then we know that it's ready to be struck and it's ready to be tooled out. So at that point, we gotta take a trowel here and scrape this excess mortar off. And what you're gonna get after you scrape this off this right here, just this thin piece of mortar that's tucked into the mortar joints. At this point, you're ready to strike the mortar joints. With this, you're gonna use your striking tool. A concave joint, we're gonna assume we're doing the concave joint. At this point, you're gonna press down with a lot of pressure. When you feel this give way, all you're gonna do is rake this across and strike the mortar and that should fill in your mortar the way it needs to be nice and flat and concave you're going to, need to match the depth if you're working on a house that's not very deep the different joints um, you don't want to press too hard it will be too deep and it won't match you want to kind of match the mortar that you're working with but that's what you're going to do you're going to strike down and you're going to fill in the mortar in this joint and that's to give you that nice concave shape with this tool right here. This is what this tool is used for. After that's done, you're gonna to wanna to brush this off. At about a 45 degree angle, you don't wanna go this way. You're gonna end up knocking the mortar out. So a 45 degree angle, get that excess mortar off of the brakes and all that excess inside the mortar joint taken care of and pushed out. After you've done that, you'll go ahead and go across the whole rest of your brick structure, knocking out that excess mortar that you just grouted and going ahead and striking it before it gets you dry. Basic brick laying entails, your head joint and your bed joint of your replacement brick and sticking it in right here. to the empty space. So how we do brick laying is essentially we're going to put a, thin, a, a little thick coat here of mortar on the head joint and that's what's going to fit into this joint right here. And then we're going to put mortar on the bed joint of the, J, the brakes that we're, we're trying to join right here. So once this is down we're gonna have the same effect that we had here. The grout typically is gonna come over and overlap on the brakes that we just placed the replacement brake on. At this point, you'll do the same thing that you did when you grout it and you struck the brick, and that's waiting a bit, striking off the excess mortar with the trowel, and then striking the brick. Let's go over back to the board. In conclusion, the major points I want to tell you guys today 
is the mortar mix ratio. It's very important. If you don't have the right amount of sand or the right amount of cement, the end product is not gonna be what you expect. It might be too sandy, there might not be enough cement, and it's gonna, the structure is gonna collapse. Uh, striking, you don't wanna strike when it's too early. Always use the thumbprint method and make sure that the mortar is ready to be struck or you're gonna end up having to do a lot of cleanup afterwards. It's happened to me multiple times where I've struck the mortar when it was too wet and I'd have to go back and wash off the brick and just have to restrike it and regrout it. And also, safety first. Make sure you have goggles, tools, and gloves. Everything that you need. Uh, structural collapse is not like pretty. You don't want it to happen on you. So be ready to be out of the way of falling brick. And um, if you're not a professional, you don't know how to use power tools, make sure you use a hammer, hammer, chisel, something like that. Don't do anything that you don't feel is safe to you. And that's it.